One of the prizes you pay for being godless is that people will keep threatening to pray for you, which can be a little creepy. As you know, they're not praying for you to become happy and fulfilled, but for you to become religious, which is often far from the same thing. They're praying for their beliefs to have influence over your life. In other words, they're not praying for you at all. They're praying against you. So can I say to the people who have said that they're praying for me, please don't do it. You're not doing any of us any good, and frankly, you're wasting your time. I'm beyond redemption. I categorically reject God. I wholeheartedly deny the Holy Spirit. I'm fully resigned to eternal damnation, and I'm absolutely fine with it. You'd be far better off praying for yourself, because that's what you're doing anyway. And, well, you never know, you might just get lucky. Because, you see, I believe that prayer, like religion itself, is all in the mind, which can be a very big place in many cases. Now, we're very lucky that we live in an age when we know so much about the mind, apart from what it is, where it is, and how it works, obviously. We think it lives in the brain. Well, we're pretty sure it's there. The fact is, we'd put money on it being there, but we can't be absolutely positive because, sadly, it's not yet possible to open the brain, cut out the mind, kill it, and display it in a glass case. But I'm sure that's just a matter of time as science marches on. One thing we do know about the mind is that it's extremely powerful and extremely malleable. Not always an ideal combination. We know it's powerful enough to talk itself into just about anything, so that when religion comes along, taking credit for the good stuff and making the bad stuff your fault, it becomes very easy to persuade yourself that you're an unworthy sinner, which is exactly what you'll become if you keep telling yourself that, because that's how the mind works. So you'll be an unworthy sinner, but only because you talked yourself into it like an idiot, and now you've got to spend your whole life battling your own nature to remain virtuous. Is that stupid, or is it crazy? It's got to be one or the other. Well, I've heard it said that prayer is also a kind of self-hypnosis. A way of programming the subconscious mind to work behind the scenes on your behalf. And in some ways that does make a lot of sense, because we know that the body and the mind are not, in fact, separate things. We know that if you're thinking troublesome thoughts, for example, your muscles will tense up without you even realising it, and if you keep it up, then pretty soon different chemicals start getting produced, until before you know it, there's a whole different party going on in your body just because of what you're thinking. It's well known that optimistic people tend to recover from illness more quickly than pessimists because their mind is working with them and for them, not against them. So if you're praying for something but you don't seem to be getting what you're praying for, maybe it's not because the supernatural has let you down but because your subconscious mind believes that you don't deserve it and you thought God was judgmental. But where do you suppose your mind might have picked up an idea like that? You see, this is why I think you'll be far more likely to pray successfully without religion than with it. Because religion doesn't want you to feel that you deserve it. Religion wants you to feel that you deserve to be on your knees in penitence and submission, praying for mercy. Religion wants life to be a fate worse than death. That's why it makes such a virtue of misery. To suffer is to be holy, right? You want to be like Jesus, don't you? Of course you do. Otherwise, how will you be saved from all that eternal torture? And compared to that fate, a little earthly suffering is actually a good investment. It's like money in the bank, and all it's going to cost you is a pair of sore knees and a crippling guilt complex. What a deal. Seriously, pray for yourself. You're the one who needs it. And if you want to pray successfully for yourself, and I'm assuming that you do, then I'd suggest the first thing you need to do is dump religion. And then you need to convince yourself that you deserve it. You know you do, but you have to believe it. You have to have faith. Otherwise, you'll be wasting your time. And I really hope it works out for you, but you don't have to worry about me. I'm calling religion's bluff, and I'm happily hurtling towards hell in a handcart with my feet up and smoking a cigar. Bring it on, baby. Bring it on. Peace.